and what have you. So, um, but we we did meet some audience resistance sometimes, Teddy, and and wonder if you've ever encountered this as you, um, you know, delve into things that are not uh, the traditional classical music. Do uh, they, we had this? There'd be a section of the audience sometimes, especially festivals, where bluegrass festivals, you you bring your own folding chair a lot of times, so you set it up wherever you want to, and. Um, when we'd come out and play our progressive stuff or original tunes or what have you, uh, within about first two or three tunes, you'd hear what we called them the chair snappers. <laughs> and the chair snappers, they don't just get up and walk off from hearing you. They like to snap that chair shut demonstratively that we are displeased and we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, we had we had the chair snappers and uh, a number of years ago uh i don't know how long it's been uh really got to play on a cool project if you've ever heard of a great jazz bass player named charlie hayden charlie uh grew up playing country music old time country music like the carter family you know before he learned oh, of God. jazz and became educated in that way so charlie wanted to go back to his roots and at this point has his grown um, triplets the three girls sing in beautiful harmony together so charlie had got a bunch of us guys nashville guy jerry douglas and me and bayla fleck played on a couple brian sutton on guitar and got us to back the hayden family it was called so we backed the hayden family and charlie's wife ruth sang on some of it and this was a funny part that one of one of the triplets was married to Jack Black, is married to Jack Black, the actor. Oh. So Jack, so Jack sang a song, <laughs> a traditional song, old Joe Clark with us. And um, but anyway, we we Charlie hates. So we now Charlie has this ensemble booked on the Montreal Jazz Festival, very prestigious jazz festival, where Charlie is known for bringing progressive you know, new sounds with Ornette Coleman and what have you. And we walked out there and started doing this old time country music. And we were indoors at this beautiful, beautiful auditorium in Montreal. And, um, but when, when, when you'd get up, the, the, the seat automatically snapped too. <laughs> and oh, that, yeah. I didn't know there were jazz chair snappers, but there are. And uh, so Charlie Hayden, so I, it, it, all of a sudden it, I realized, wow, it, it isn't just bluegrass or, or country music. There was actually jazz people that were totally unhappy with what Charlie Hayden brought, something different to that jazz audience. And Charlie felt like this was as, uh, just as important as jazz and something that he thought they would open their mind and accept. But many in the audience didn't like that show. Have you ever found that? It's like as you bring new things to to a classical style? Yes, but less and less so. I mean, I think that's the funny thing about this era um, that you have your, your you know, devotees to every very tiny band of style. Like your, uh -huh. your, you know, the, the, the width of the style is so narrow when you look at like what, what Apple music is trying to, to get you to listen to, you know, they know you like, like Netflix knows you, they know you down to right. a little teeny yeah. width of this kind of, if you like that particular kind of, of, you know, specific classical or specific form of jazz, like they know how to market more of that to you. And it's so funny that, that at the same time though, the musicians themselves, I think have never been so fluid. This is the most fluid um, I've ever seen in yes. terms of, of being able to collaborate and, and you know, thinking about um, what, what's possible. And, and I think the audiences have, have shifted along with it. Um, I mean, classical would have at, at a certain time been the most orthodox. I mean, you think back in the, you know, the early 20th century, mid 20th century, is, it's probably like a lot of the, the jazz fans uh, you know, especially the last 20 years or maybe the bluegrass fans of, of, of a certain era where it's if it's not fitting within a certain definition uh, of what it, what those styles are, they would be really almost offended. And that's broken right. down now, um, which is which is one of the really great things, I think, about this 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 era, and especially for you know classical musicians that we don't we don't find ourselves limited because honestly, a little bit like bluegrass 
you know, what is, what does it even mean anymore? I mean, what does classical mean? We, we play, I mean, I've programmed music from the, from the 15th century on our concerts. Uh -huh. And how can you say that that's the same thing as Aaron Copeland is okay. Maybe it's, yeah. Not, not, not even related in style. So I'm glad that the definitions have, have opened up. Well, and of course that opens the door for people like me to get to come be part of your world. <laughs>